Good morning, everybody. How are you? This just proves my point, Fiona. You never sleep. You are all. You're always up, mate. I'm really starting to think you don't go to bed. <laughs> I'm. Um, I'm just finishing off this blanket stitch that we did last night when my machine decided to prove a point that it's always operator error, which it was, and I got monopoly a little bit of monopoly caught in my bobbin race so i came out with fresh eyes this morning and had it cleared in two seconds and um i'm just finishing this off now i did do it before but i got a little bit sidetracked good morning sue hello judy how are you are you good hello karen let me just get down here one thing when you are doing this blanket stitch, always remember when you get to a V or a corner to always finish with your needle on the outside edge of your work. Thank you, Miss Jane. Um, so that you can pivot without sort of getting a distorted blanket stitch as you go. There. So it's Thursday. And... Uh, Mum's in the background, packing um, wholesale orders actually at the moment that we have going out to some of our beautiful shops in Australia and also uh, some patterns just to pop in the top of Diana's box going to Costa Rica, who I was watching on Pacal's quilts just before. Susie's been and picked up one uh, December 9, December 9 for the advent calendar. Don't be fooled, we're not that far behind. They don't necessarily get packed off in the order, uh, in, in numerical order. Good morning, Karen, Jeanette, Chris, hello, Donna Marie's here. Carleen Richardson's in the building. Grandy, oh my goodness, Grandy, have you been here recently? I haven't seen you. Okay, there we go. We'll push a button, we'll just push a cut button. We'll get a little securing stitch. And there we are, that's done. So, oh, so you all got the memo. You all got the memo I was popping in. Oh, I no frills this morning to finish the bag. Um, so there you go. That's that other side done with the monopoly. And it was just, it was just me last night. I'll give you a close up so you can see I've done the other side. There you go. So if anything, you can just see a little bit of an indent where my blanket stitches are, but you can't see any thread. Now, but also, as I mentioned, if you don't, if you don't want to risk risk it for a biscuit the monopoly i had i had those two uh, lovely thread colors out last night so this one was um k306 if it's out of stock i'm not sure if they all went last night just put in request at the bottom for an email notification when they're back in because i will do another order with janet wonderfill today or tomorrow there you go so it's a beautiful soft apricot peachy color so it's really lovely. So if you did want a blanket stitch, you've got that. Or if you are playing with this one, this is color 316 and it's still tagged under last night's banner. I haven't, I haven't touched anything yet. I haven't even touched the set. I haven't started pulling it down. So if you didn't watch last night, if you pop the word scissors into the search window at the top, it will bring you up all the things that we talked about last night on the show. So all these lovely new fabrics and the, the ginkgo leaf charms and all that sort of, all of those fun things are still in there. I left this pinned from last night. If you have a look around there. So this is the second half of our of our bag panels, if you like, going on. And if you remember last night, I said, if you're pinning a straight edge onto your curve, whether it be patchwork or a bag base or anything like that, keep your pins nice and close together because it's the only way you're going to make sure you get that lovely ease around um, around the curve and of course just like anything the tighter the curve the closer together they should be and um Carly, carlene's watching this morning lesser would say well i don't know if lesser would say but voices like lessers are in my head if it's a really really tight curve i'd probably tack it to be honest as well and then take the pins out. So I would just, I would tack it an eighth of an inch so I didn't have to take the tacking out later. Uh, I'm just switching over to a cotton. Oh, there it is. Just 
switching over to cotton now because we want to sew on our other panel onto the base. So if you missed what I did this morning from the front gate with the Waratahs, um, I wanted to come and finish this this morning because a few people have asked me for a kit. So the only way I can do a kit is if I've actually got a photo of it. So I thought, well, we'd better get it done this morning so we can keep going. Who else popped in this morning? Christine Allen's here and I did see your message and that's absolutely cool. I will set it aside for you. Dale, good morning. How are we? Are we good? Um, a few people placed multiple orders yesterday. There is no crime in that, but if you would like me to keep your order till after Sunday show, please uh, uh, email me now, or if you popped a comment on the earlier show, that's, that's fine, and I'll make sure that we have it all ready for you to go on uh, Monday morning. I'll start packing them off Sunday, but I'll hold just until the last minute and post them out on Monday. Um, I put the wrong foot on because I was talking. I need my walking foot. If you have a dual feed machine, um, then you will probably be happy to run with that because we're only working with adhesive pellet and you might be comfortable. Otherwise, when you get to the next step, please remember to pop on your walking foot because you're now going through a couple of layers of fabric and a couple of layers of batting as well. So here we go. So I'm just going to run around this bit and then we can fly up those sides really quickly. And it'll be good. Okay. So down here I've got a quarter inch seam allowance open here on both, both sides. That one's already sewn on. And I'll do the same on this side so that we've got those two seam allowances to grab onto to run up the, uh, to run up the side. I'm just going to carefully put my foot down and the joys and the pains of having a smart machine. I'm going to tell it which foot I've got on, but that's all cool. And then we can start. I'm going to lift my foot up, take out the pin that I've got in there, and then we can go around. And I'll just sew with a nice quarter inch seam. It's always good to set your machine. Remember to have your needle down because you really do want to use um, uh, you want to be able to use kind of that as that needle down as a securing stitch. What am I doing? Let's go here. That's better. Um, like a securing stitch to hold it in place while you pivot a little bit and take your pins out. Now you can see here, I've got a little bit, can you see that? I've got a little bit of my base kicking up so I know that I have it pinned really well. So I'm just gonna stretch that over a little bit so that I keep my nice curve. And it's slow as you go because I've got all these pins in but it kind of guarantees for me. What is this here? Okay. Then I'm going to get that nice curve. When I got back into the house last night, all I could see was circles. Not, not from the ring lights, but just things around the house that we could use. So they were lids off pots and pans, and as I mentioned last night, lots of plates. But also if you want to keep um, you want to use something that stays in your bag, any of those old melamine or plastic plates that you've got in the cupboard, cork placemats, anything like that. And of course, if you don't have one, but you've got a plate that's the absolute right size, then a piece of template plastic is going to do the job as well. If, you, if you're not planning on putting anything too heavy into your bag. Right all the way around. Right. Okay. So that seam now is done right around there. And we can now bring both our sides together. And if you remember last night too, I was just going to make sure that where I've got these seams in my different little panel strips here on the side, 
that's the first thing I'll do is make sure that they fit nicely together. So I'll pop a pin in there. You can use clips if you want as well. So I'll make sure they fit. And then I'm pretty confident just to that everything's going to sit nice while I whip up that side. So I'll just put one more pin down this end because these are now nice straight seams. And we'll do the other one at the same time. Good morning, Di Nugent. How are you today? Are you good? Carol, hello and welcome. Good morning. Who said that? Good morning, ladies. See, Fiona's here. She's always awake. Always, always. Good morning, Rhonda. Um, I replied to your email and I'll pop your samples in the mail for you today or tomorrow. Rhonda is making the, I've seen the fabric, the most beautiful um, quilt for a wedding. Absolutely stunning. And she was stuck in apparel for the background. So I'm sending her out some samples because that's just one of the things we love to do is help you out because it's hard to choose things sometimes. Um, without being able to see them in person, more, more of the, the colours are accurate as far as we can get them on our website, but of course it depends on your screen as well and you know my fabrics, but if you are choosing one of those difficult things like a cream for a background and you do need to buy a fair bit, we're more than happy to send you out some swatches. Okay, there we go. So that one's done as well. So then we'll be able to give you a little idea. So you can see, did I didn't even pin that. I didn't even pin this one. You can sort of get a feel now, I think at this stage, that it is very much like um, this bag, which is the one we did our Botanica bag from the calendar. So if you look at that, you've got both those sides and that shape base. It is essentially, it is the same assembly technique and you can see that at this stage. So we'll take it back over and whip up these side seams. I'm throwing absolute caution to the wind with those pins, <laughs> but they are our good. Bless you, Mum. <laughs> they are, but they're the good clover ones that the the machine needle will just slip over. So I am being naughty. You can see I'm having absolutely no regard for starting at the bottom up or up down, I'm reversing it. But if, if I if I had you all in a room and, I was, and a shop was paying me to teach you, I would probably be a little bit more technically correct and I would probably say, now girls, always start from the base up because you can always trim, trim away any excess at the top and avoid a bulge at the bottom, but I'm not, am I? Okay. There we go. So fingers crossed, those little intersections are all gonna meet up down there together. And you'll see, I've actually got the, the um, sewing platform off my machine and it's mainly because last night when I tried to fix the machine, I had to pull it off, but I've got the camera in quite close. So that's why I would usually have it on. We'll take that pin out, we'll have a look. Oh, and that one. Let's see how we're going. There you go. But 
we've got that round base. So just let's just have a little test drive and we'll just sit our cork mat that we started with as the template for our base in there. And do you remember I said to you, when you measure it up, maybe just round it up to the next inch. Just give yourself a little bit extra because you're going to have that thickness um, from the batting that's in there, which will kind of reduce the internal circumference of it. So now I've got that in, there's my base. So that's all sitting very nice. It, it Look, it does need, does need a good press. An Emma press, we call it, because Emma just has this ability to press every bag into submission. So we call it the Emma press, but that's all good. So I'm gonna take that out again. We're going to turn it inside out. So when you come to put your lining and your outer bag together, I always start with the um, outer bag on the outside and I pop my lining in because, because of that batting, the circumference is just that little bit smaller on the outer bag, so you're always going to find it easier to match up your seams if they are in this configuration with the lining in the middle. So we'll match up these side seams here first. Um, please do as I say, not as I do. I'd love you to just take the time to press that seam open and it will sit much nicer for you around the top. But I'll just pop a pin, just one for now in here. And then we'll go across to the other side and pop another one in. Okay. This one goes in here. All right, now we are ready for these cord sleeves that we talked about as well. So I cut mine at, yeah, two and a half. And because this finished size across here, if you remember from last night, our panels are 12. So I want these to be 12 so they are butt up against each other on the side seams. So I've actually made this 13 and what it allowed me to do was iron over both ends twice. So I've taken up half an inch on each end instead of a quarter. So that one's done, we'll pop him in. So he's going to get sandwiched in between the lining and the outer bag, right, right up to that side seam. There you go, buddy, in there. If you can, I don't think you can hear the rustling from here, but mum, there's a rustle going on and it's a mum unpacking a whole heap of beautiful new variegated um, Sue Spargo threads. So we're going to have a chat about those next week. I haven't even got them all up on the website yet. So we're doing a restock and new colours in. So that's on next week's agenda. One there and oh I thought he wasn't long enough for a moment but he actually had that little seam allowance curled over off you so that will go on that side all right now to prep the other one just to show you what I did I'm going to use the cork mat that's going inside fold over your seam allowance just fold it over twice we'll give it a little press And same on the other end, just a little two folds of a quarter inch. Here's my cork mat doubling up as an ironing board and then we'll fold it in half. I'm going to press this now and then we'll just pop it, we'll open it up again and we'll press, pop over to the machine and just top stitch these down. Yes, Fiona, it is, it's Thread City over there. And we've restocked all the Fianas and Confetti because you're going through them. So, and there's a lot, so I don't even visually check them anymore. I do it on our website stock or otherwise I can make mistakes. All right, let's pop over and pop these in. Needless to say, I have a couple of weird colors I have way too many of because I did it from the stand, not now stock chart so that's my bad okay when you're doing this little top stitch if you do find it challenging to get right on the edge 
and particularly if you've got a dual feed machine like this. What I do is I make sure that my um, my little double seam is at least sitting over one of my feed dogs and then I'll move my needle across so it's sitting right on the edge of the fabric. can always be challenging if you um, the other thing too of course you can do if you've got a dual feed and you've got the extra wide feed dogs is to pop on your straight stitch plate and leave your needle in that center position so that's your other option and just remember if you do do that in the middle of making a bag or something with blanket stitch um, if you have the ability to tell your machine that you've got that straight stitch plate on which if you've got um, one of the five or seven series or eight series banana as you can then please remember to do that so that when you go back to doing a stitch that's got some width in it you don't break your needle on the stitch plate. Okay so that's those two done so it's just it's just a little top stitch just along there and I just made it a little bit easier by moving my needle. I'll just trim that up. Now we've got our other one ready to pop in on the other side and you really do want these in together at the same time so that you can just whiz right around that top because remember we have got an opening already left in the straight side seam of our bag so I'll pop that in there and I'll pop a little in, in. Good morning Mary, good morning Karen, I can see you're watching. Susan, welcome, good morning to you. <laughs> oh, you're funny Sus. Okay, so, put that one across there. So, um, Sunday morning, uh, we are doing a few little bee themed things. There's a little bit of a project, there's a little bit of a technique, there's a little bit of applique, there's um, a little bit of gift wear. So it will just be a cute little show. Maybe, maybe it needs honey cakes as well. I don't know. I don't, I had a great honey cake recipe that um, I haven't used. We had honey cakes at our housewarming at our house in Bow Morris. That's how long ago I got the recipe, but I don't know where it is at the moment. Jean, good morning. Hello, Anne. Good morning. Hello, Carla. All right, so now I've got that. Both those sleeves are in, and we're going to whiz right round. So this is where you definitely want to take your sewing machine platform off so that you can um, have slip it on if you like, slip the bag on over the sleeve on here. You can start and finish anywhere you like. It should be better not to start right on one of those side seats. It would be a really good idea if I put my needle back in the middle. Okay. think what else I got asked last night. Oh yes, uh, a little bit more information about Larkin Park. So Craft Alive is coming to Gippsland again. We did the one, was it February last year I think? It's a long time ago. We did Feb uh, down at Morwell and this year it is moving so it's going to be up at the at Lardner Park, um, just outside Warrigal. So hop on the Craft Alive website or their Facebook page and have a look. But we would love to see you there. It is, um, oh, I took that pin out. Five, five centimeters, five millimeters too early. Um, of course, it's not far from our new place, so it's nice and easy for us. But we are looking forward to being there and catching up with everyone. And it's not, it's not hard to find, is it, Mum? No. It's not. There's big signs as you come off the freeway, isn't there? Yep. Just near where I got my yep. 
what else do they have there? Gardening shows. Yeah. Dog shows, gardening shows. Oh. Anyway, it's going to be a quilting show. So we're very much looking forward to that. Um, if you, you will be able to, just the week before, make any requests of orders you would like us to take in for you to pick up. Um, I'm not around until the week just before. As you know, I'll be, faced, I'll be doing Facebook shows from Spain in my spare time. Um, but you'll be able to get in contact with us and we can organise anything for you. It might be an opportune time to pick up your Christmas advent calendar as well. So we can talk about that, which we'll do Sunday morning. All right, I've been right round. Let me take that off. We'll see where we're at. Do you know I've got to this bit on the bag before and realised I forgot to put the sleeves in? But not today. At about this point, you'll make a decision if you've left your lining opening big enough to get the bag through. I'd almost say touch and go, but I think we're going to be okay. Fiona says, I'm hoping to be there, but I'll swap shifts and need to come and see you before I go to sleep. <laughs> well, you're very good at that, Fiona. I've seen you do that before. All right, so now we've just got to get ourselves sorted just a little bit sorted here and you sort of want to pull that sleeve or both those sleeve pieces away from your bag and your lining first and then you'll be able to pop the lining inside now I'm not going to lie to you this needs a really good press around the top and if you find that it's still not sitting to your liking you might want to come back and do a nice little top stitch around this top seam here if you can do it with a matching thread if you're not confident about how straight you can keep it. But just like I did then with that little top stitch, you do it with your walking foot on and just move your needle across so it's sitting exactly where you want it, just on that, just on the dark red it would be on mine here, just that little bit. You will be fine because you can have your whole walking foot sitting across this seam and just move your needle across to the left a little bit so it's just going to give you that little top stitch. Use any part of that walking foot to line up with this seam here as well to help you keep a nice straight line. Okay, so that's all done and I need to sew up that lining. But first, let's pop in our cord. So you need two pieces and they've got to be quite generous So, because I want to be able to tie it in a bow. So if I, if I do say that, keeping in mind I'm going to get more cord when I pull it up tight, probably about that. If I hold that down off, it's, it's a metre. So that's, that's 40 inches. So I'm going to need two of these, two metres of this for this bag. So if you are buying all your components because you're going to make your own up, Please just make a note of that. It's good to have about a metre for each side. Then I'll pop a knot in that one and in this one. And I might come back and do them again later. I might cover them, put a bead on them, whatever I like. But it's good to have them knotted off so that they don't fray, particularly for this next bit. Yes, Fiona, I know you have driven many days on no sleep. So... There you go. All right, I'm going to use, I know, I know a lot of you have the magic gadgets for popping things through uh, sleeves. Oh, there's Tim ringing, our favourite distributor. I wonder what he's ringing for. I don't know. What have I ordered? I don't know. I'll ring him back later. Okay, so here's my seam. I've got my uh, safety pin through a knot. As I was saying, I know you've got lots of gadgets and so do I probably somewhere. But for this purpose this morning, we're just gonna use a safety pin because it's nice and easy. So remember what I said last night too, make sure that you have these sleeves wide enough to take at least two widths, probably three widths of your cord through because we're going to have two lots going through these. So I've come through in one end, out the other, and then we go back in. So 
So if you are going to get the kit with the pattern, this is one thing just worth noting because a lot of people ring me going, I don't, I don't understand how do we how do we get the other one in? And they try and put them in from the same end, but they actually go in opposite ends. So there's one out to there. Okay, like that. And then we're going to do the same going the other way. So I'll put my knot in with my pin. So this is the loop where we came in and out last time and this is the other side. So now we're going to go through here. Julie, good morning. Hello Pauline Boyke, how are you? Colleen Hurring is here. Oh, good morning. I bet you're all in your sewing rooms. I bet you are. So now we're going to come out here and this is where we finished last time and we're going to go back in. So you'll have two ends and a loop on each side. Okay, nearly there. There we go. moment moment the moment so I'm going to pop my cork down in there so he's all nice and snug in the bottom and then we can pull these up like that there's our little bag so we've got a little bit of English paper piecing detail on each side Do you know what else would work? Is a little plastic, a little plastic pot plant, pot, because then you get a little bit of. If you wanted a tall one, you get a little bit of sides as well. But there you go. So when we when we did this last night, I was worried that the dimensions probably were not great um, in terms of the base, but I think it is okay. So we've got that larger that was cut four and a half three and a half and three and a half but you can see what I mean you don't want your your applique detail or your embroidery or whatever to be too high up or otherwise you'll lose it um, in the gather at the top all right so there we go now the other thing too as I mentioned last night we have got lots of little bits and pieces that you might like to embellish your bag with so we've got the little d hooks that I showed you last night so one of those well in that side seam in one of those that we just sewed up you could have a little loop of fabric or cord coming through and you could pop one of those on. So you can pop your car keys or a little lanyard or anything on there. So there's those. And we've also got those gorgeous little ginkgo leaf charms. Oh, hit the iron. Those little ginkgo leaf charms as well that you could attach onto one of these, which actually that'd be really cute. You don't have to leave the ends of these cords separate either. So I could actually take these two now and put them together in one large knot so that they were, they were all done. But it would be quite easy to sew or clip one of these onto here as well. So you can have your little, have your little ginkgo leaf on the side. Anyway, that's all for a little bit of fun play. Down there in the sewing room for you this weekend. If you're going to do your own, if not, I will get the photo of this done and pop it up as a kit with a little pattern for you, and that'll probably happen by Monday. I'm going to go quickly and set aside the fabric that I know we need to make this up so it doesn't all get gobbled up by people buying it by the meter, or that'll make me very sad. So I'll do that and I'll make sure this kit has got the cord. Um, five EPP templates with it as well and the palin and the whole lot and um, you'll just need to find yourself a little plate or a little cork mat to put inside here or I'll put the size of the circle in and you can do it out of template plastic as well all right so that's that so thank you so much and again I apologize as I said before it's a no makeup day today um, Jude Davey hello to you uh, so I um, promise we'll be looking a lot better on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock because you know I'm a morning person. 
Lardner Park is where they hold the field days. Yes, Fiona, there's a lot of stuff that happens at Lardner Park, including Craft Life, which is super do. <laughs> well, there you go, Jill. So you haven't missed out at all. Hello, Kath. Oh, look, thank you all so much for popping in this morning. Um, I shall see you with honeys and bees, maybe honey on toast, honey on crumpets, something like that and a little bit more fun on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, right? In the meantime, if you've got any questions, email me info at channelscottage.com and everything is under the word scissors in the search window on the website, all right? You have a fantastic day. Bye.